what's going on everyone? This is Austin from Call on Our Shot. Welcome back. It is week four. It's best parlays to place this weekend. Now today I'll have my favorite touchdown parlay, my favorite money line parlay, and three more player props for this weekend. Now click the subscribe button if you are new. We are closing on 10,000 subscribers. And we appreciate all the new people joining the channel. And also click the like button too and I'll set a like goal. If we hit 500 likes, I'll start off next week's video by jumping in the pool fully clothed. That is your challenge. The ball is in your court. Now let's take a look at the record 28 and 11 through week three. We started off Thursday night football with two two more wins, so bring it up to 30 and 11. You'll love to see that. Now my favorite spreads, over-unders, a teaser, some more player props are all in the video posted on Thursday. I'll link that one down below as well. But as a side note, I'll have a separate video for the Bucks versus Patriots, the same game parlay in that one, and Chargers Raiders, same game parlay in that one as well. Both those will be posted later on Saturday and then on Sunday. But let's get into the action. Moneyline parlay, here's who we're rocking with. Saints, Chiefs, Rams, Packers. That's plus 260. I love all these teams. Now let's talk into it. Now, why are the Titans not here? Well, for starters, A.J. Brown and Julio Jones aren't playing, and I'm just not going to mess around with them. I already have them in my teaser. I don't need to put more, more trust in that Titans team on the road. Now, I get it. The Jets are bad. Now, where are the Bills at? Well, they're minus 1,600, so they're not finding their way into a money line parlay, and they should not find their way into your money line parlay, in my opinion. But Saints, Chiefs, Rams, Packers, let's talk about the Saints. They're the most hot and cold team in the NFL, but they're going up against a very cold team, the New York Giants 0-3 and they have all their receivers are injured if you're Kenny Galladay they're probably their only healthy one he's he's injured as well not even healthy he's injured as well Kadarius Tony their first round pick should finally see some more playing time which is great for him but Saints defense should be able to clamp him up and I think they'll be able to control the line of scrimmage Alvin Kamara will see the ball a ton and their guess is their first home game since Hurricane Ida I think the crowd will be amped up and I think the Saints get the win at home second leg Chiefs yeah, the Chiefs aren't going down one and three. I just don't think that's happening. They're playing an Eagles team, and even though they're on the road, Patrick Mahomes will get it done. Not worried about them. Now, the Rams, you know they're in my teaser, the other part of the teaser in my previous video, so go check out that one if you haven't already seen it. Rams, great defense and a great offense. First in the Cardinals, I think they can control them. They beat the Cardinals eight straight games. Would not be surprised to see them make it nine. They've made, really made Kyler Murray struggle. We have a Cardinals prop on later on this video, and so I'd be hesitant betting a lot of Cardinals overs. So moving on to the last leg, the Packers. Yeah, I mean, you talk about it, Packers. This is more, you know, if you watch the podcast, you've watched the channel for a while, not a big Packers homer. I don't necessarily think think they're a little bit overrated at the moment, but this more speaks to how bad Big Ben and the Steelers have been. Big Ben has just been absolutely terrible, and I'm just going to bet the Packers here. I think they get the win. I believe they're at home this weekend. And they're playing against the Steelers team that struggles to move the ball. Big Ben, if you've seen the clips, if you haven't seen the clips, Big Ben... Yikes, yeah, yeah, enough said. Moving on to my anytime touchdown parlay, Cooper Cup and Travis Kelsey. Those two guys are riding with Cooper Cup. He was one of the legs that helped us cash last week, plus 250 with Devontae Adams. Today, we're pairing him up with Travis Kelsey. Now, Cooper Cup, Stafford loves him. The man's been an absolute touchdown fiend. Five of touchdowns so far, so I'm all in on Cup. I think he gets it done again against that Cardinals team. Now, as for Kelsey, spoiler alert, I'm taking his over for receiving yards, so make sure you go check out that. That's one of the player props from the previous video, and I'll be taking it. And if you look at it, the Philadelphia Eagles just got exposed by Dalton Schultz, and Kelsey, he has scored, he had, prior to last week, had scored a touchdown in six straight games, and now, if you look back over his last 14 games, Kelsey has never gone back-to-back -back two straight games without a touchdown. Obviously, he didn't score last weekend, so I anticipate he scores this weekend. For what it's worth, he has only played the Eagles once in his career back in 2017, and he scored a touchdown there and went over 100 yards receiving. I'm all in. Plus 185 value. Not too shabby. You can add on other guys, but I like Cup and Kelsey. Two Ks to get into the end zone. Speaking of Dalton Schultz, Let's go into some more player props, and we're taking this under 36 and a half receiving yards, minus 110 on Caesars. Now, Dalton Schultz, he came out and had a game on Monday Night Football. Six receptions, 70 yards, and two touchdowns. The man was a machine, and this necessarily is not an anti-Dalton Schultz channel. If you're watching Dalton out there, I actually really like you and hope you get paid this offseason when you are a free agent. He's one of the young, emerging tight ends in the NFL. But this more comes down to matchup and opportunity. Now, Schultz, He's hit this over in two of three games so far this season. So, hey, he's he's been making people money that are Dalton Schultz homers. Now, he hit it in week one against the Bucks, when I'm pretty sure every single Cowboy hit the over besides Ezekiel Elliott and maybe Tony Pollard, if you even had overs then. And then, obviously, he missed him week two, which we'll talk about in a second. And then week three, he obviously hit it when he played against the Eagles. Now, week two, he struggled. He only had two targets, two receptions, 18 yards against a very, very stout Chargers defense. Now, if you think about a stout defense, that's who they're playing this weekend against the Panthers, one of the best defenses in the NFL, in my opinion. They did lose J.C. Horn, but they got C.J. Henderson from the Jaguars. 
Doubt he he's not, won't be as good as J.C. Horn, who's a rookie, only played two, three games, but do think he'll be a good addition to the team. But if you look at it, the Panthers, one of the best defenses against tight ends. Week one, they gave up six receptions, 48 yards to my New York Jets, which was a surprise. And I don't know why I say my, because I don't really want to claim them, because they've looked god-awful so far this week, this year. Week two, they gave up just one reception and 23 yards to tight ends against the Saints. Week three, four receptions, 32 yards to the Texans' tight ends. Now, that's for tight ends as a collective. And so that's not just one tight end. That's not the number one tight end on the team. That's just all tight ends. And that's so you think about the Cowboys, they not only have Dalton Schultz, they have Blake Jarwin, who plays a ton of snaps. And if you're a Cowboys fan, you know they run a lot of two tight end sets. They're used a lot for blocking. And Jarwin's on the field running a lot of routes with Dalton Schultz. Now the Panthers, they have Shaq Thompson, Jeremy Chin, two great defenders, two guys that can play coverage against tight ends. And that's why that position has struggled so far against them this season. Now I expect Schultz to struggle soon and struggle again this week. He's not going to get a lot of targets like he saw against that and against in that game against the Chargers week two, a very good defense. Yeah, he only saw two targets. Wouldn't be surprised to see him only see two targets this week. Now last note, over his last 15 games, Dalton Schultz has gone under this line and nine of the nine of the 15, he doesn't normally go back to back games hitting the over. I think the only time he had done it was maybe like week 17 and then week one of this year. So does that really count? I think the offense flows through Amari Cooper and CeeDee Lamb, who both had bad weeks last week. I think they get those guys going and say, you know what? They're wide receivers. They want to eat too. And I think those guys will get their plenty of chances. That's what I'm taking in this under, which I don't bet a lot of unders, as you guys know. But I'm going to bet another one here. James Conner, under 34 and a half rushing yards, minus 115 on DraftKings. Now I got to shout out my boy Vaughn or at V Money Sports on Twitter. If you aren't following Vaughn, Definitely go check him out. He's featured on NBC Sports Edge. He gives out a lot of free bets, and he, he's awesome. So go give him a follow. Make sure you're giving us a follow, too, because I always like to tweet out my plays, too, at Call on Our Shot. So make sure you're following us. But he provided a good amount of the analysis, and I'm just, like, copying and pasting. But he, he nailed it on the head. Connor, he's gone over this line in two games, two of three, 53, 26, and 43 rushing yards so far in the season. The two overs were against Jacksonville and Tennessee, both not very good defenses, and he saw 16 and 11 carries in those games, and obviously Arizona won the games pretty handily because they beat Tennessee in week one pretty handily, and then Jacksonville, they came back, but that game was not necessarily too much in question. Now, on Sunday, as you know, the Rams have beat the Cardinals eight straight games, including all four of Kyler Murray starts, who has struggled in all four, so I wouldn't be going to the, going to the well and hammering the over for Kyler Murray passing yards. I would say be patient. The Raider, the Los Angeles Rams defense has controlled and really tied down Kyler Murray so far through his career. You look at it, the Rams defense only given up one 20 yard rush this season, allowing just 4.3 yards per carry and majority of that game in week one for the Bears. Now you look at the Bucks; they didn't even try to run it last week. They had nine carries for 19 yards for Ronald Jones and Leonard Fournette. Week two, they bottled up Jonathan Taylor, who we'll talk about in a second, but he only had 50 something, I think 51 yards on 15 carries, 3.4 yards per carry. And like I said, week one, David Montgomery ran pretty well. But since week two, they faced 39 rushing attempts, allowing just 3.7 yards per carry. This is a game that I expect the Rams to control pretty much a lot of it, and they'll be able to have their way against that Cardinals defense, making the Cardinals play from behind, throwing it a lot more. That means more Chase Edmonds, not a lot of James Conner, unless it's in like a short yardage, fourth and one or fourth and goal or on the one yard line, things like that. I'm confident in this under, and I'll take it. Minus 115, under 34 and a half yards. I'm all in. My last player prop of the day, or the week maybe, we'll mention, we already talked about him, Jonathan Taylor. We haven't said his name, but here he is. Over 69 and a half rushing yards, minus 115 on DraftKings. Jonathan Taylor, 0-3 towards his line this season. So if you've been like, heck yeah, Jonathan Taylor rushing yards. Yeah, you're 0-3. You're down three units probably, but we'll put a unit on this one because I have confidence in him, not just because of the opportunity, but because of the matchup, and it's as good as it gets as they're taking on the Miami Dolphins. The Dolphins, fresh up, given 135 rushing yards to the Raiders, led by Peyton Barber and Kenyon Drake. Mostly Peyton Barber, who had over 100 yards himself. Now, week two, they gave up 110 rushing yards to the Buffalo Bills, and the Buffalo Bills don't love to run the ball, but they did that to Zach Moss and, jo and Devin Singletary. Week one, 119 rushing yards to the Patriots, led by Damian Harris. Now, this is a game the Colts should be in. They should be able to win, and or at least be close in this game. You look at it, they've had a tough schedule to start the year. They obviously played week one against the uh, Seahawks team. That's pretty good. Then the Rams, and then the Titans. All of the games that they've kind of been either trailing or, you know, they were trailing that Rams game, then they'd go up, then they'd be trailing, and vice versa, they'd get a win. 
yeah, no, I'm, I'm not in on them. You look at the Colts, they should be able to finally get, you know, some positive game script. And that means that we should see a lot more Jonathan Taylor, a big workload, get Jacoby Brissett. He doesn't scare me on the Dolphins side. I don't expect the Dolphins to go out there and just boom, lay four touchdowns on him. And then the Colts are playing from behind the whole game. I do not expect that. Colts defense should be able to force some three and outs, short drives for the Dolphins. Colts should be force feeding. Jonathan Taylor, the ball. You look at last week, they've really fed Naheem Hines the ball. Normally, what happens for the Colts, they feed a guy one week and then they go absolutely off script the next because that's why no one wants to start Naheem Hines in fantasy football because there's some games he goes off, the next game he does terrible. You look at week one and week two, Jonathan Taylor saw 15 and 17 carries. Last week, he only saw 10 carries, but he ran 6.3 yards per carry. He was still good. He just didn't get enough opportunity. Today, I think they get him at least 15 to 20 touches and that should be enough to get it get him over the 69 and a half. I like this line up to like 74 and a half yards. You look at it, He's had 50 yards in every single game. So it's not necessarily like he's going out there and putting up a 20-yard game. He's had 50-plus yards. We're just asking him to get up to 70, maybe 75, depending on when you're betting the line. And I think he has a good chance of doing it. And that's why I'm locking him in as my third and final player prop. Although I have four more player props in my previous video. So go check out that. It's linked on the screen. Bucks patriots game will also be linked on the screen when I post that video later on Saturday. Now, if you haven't watched... Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. We appreciate all the love and support. Same game parlays coming your way. Make sure you're following us on Twitter. Cat calling our shots. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. It's been Austin. We'll catch you guys again later. Let's go make some money. Peace out.